The last video showed you how to change the image attached to a word. This video is going to show you how to do the opposite, that given an image, how to actually change the word that brings up that image. So I'll just create a frame here and just type one word cat. Now my daughter has a cat and uh, it's called Begbie. Looks more like this second picture, so we'll change it for that. And perhaps then, instead of having to get this image with the word cat, it would be quite nice to get this image with the word Begbie. We can click in the word, and in order to do this, we have to press F11. Press F11, and the word disappears. An alternative is to hit this button here, which says Change Cat, to the word Sam. Well, we're not going to change the word cat to Sam here, we're going to change it to Begbie. So underneath the cat now I can type Begbie. Having finished that word it's very important to escape by using the right arrow. If you just carry on typing then it will think that all of that typing is attached to that same symbol. But the right arrow tells it that we finished the word now for that cat. So if I do a return, I can say Begbie is my cat. You can see that we have not lost the attachment of that cat, picture of a cat to the word cat, but we've also got that picture attached to the word Begbie. So we've now got Begbie is my cat, and I can, whenever I write Begbie, we will get that image. We don't just have to do that with a single word. If I, for instance, type plant, I get a variety of plants here. This and these, these two here are probably indoor plants, so I'll click on this one. And again, if I want to call that indoor plant rather than just plant, I'll use this button this time, cat to Sam. That takes the text away. That means I can now write indoor plant. Now I've finished the typing so I must use the right arrow key to get out of that or I could just click somewhere else but I've got to get out of that. And so now when I type indoor plant I will get that image. So here we've seen that we can take an existing image from the symbol set, press F11 or hit the cat to Sam button here. That removes the text. I can then retype whatever text I like underneath, press the right arrow key, and then that text is attached to that image. Now, just as we said last time, if we have Bradley and we regularly want to use that image of Bradley attached to the word, if I regularly want to use Begbie attached to that image of cat, or I regularly want to use indoor plant attached to this image here, we can do that by storing those changes permanently in the word list again. So we can go to the word list menu and click on save word list changes and this time we can see that the word list knows two new, uh, the possibility of two new words. Begbie attached to that symbol of cat, indoor plant attached to this picture here. And I could choose to add either or both of these to the widget 11 word list. So if I click indoor plant and click add, that has now gone into the widget 11 word list. So next time I open the program, indoor plant will pick up that picture. I'm not going to attach Begbie to that because Begbie I only want to use in this one document. I'm probably not going to want to use that again. So I won't attach Begbie into this word list. And that means that when I next open the program, if I did happen to want Begbie again, I'd have to put it in again. So I can click Done here. Now we've attached that permanently for future operations of the program, but not Begbie. So this is a really important use of the program to be able to change the text attached to a symbol, either with F11 or with Cat to Sam. But do remember to either click away from the word or press the right arrow when you've finished 
and it's that signal then that links the word that you've typed with the picture.